for the answers to these questions in this reading. Number one, why do you think the German soldiers stopped Anna Marie? Number two, why do you think the contents of the packet were so important? Number three, why did Anna Marie be behave like Kirsty when she was stopped by the German soldiers? Number four, why was it good that Anna Marie did not know what was in the packet? And number five, what was in the basket that helped fool the Germans into thinking it was Uncle Hendrik's lunch? Anna Marie's mind raced. She remembered what her mom, mother had said. If anyone stops you, you must pretend to be nothing more than a silly little girl. She glared at the soldiers. She remembered how she had stared at the others, frightened, when they had stopped her on the street. Kirsty hadn't been frightened. Kirsty had been, well, nothing more than a silly little girl, angered because the soldiers had touched her hair that afternoon. She had known nothing of danger, and the soldier had been amused by her. Anna Marie willed herself with all her being to behave as Kirsty would. Good morning, she said carefully to the soldiers. They looked up and down in silence. Both dogs were tense and alert. The two soldiers who held the leashes with wore thick gloves. What are you doing here? One of them asked. Anna Marie held out her basket with a thick loaf of bread visible. My uncle Hendrik forgot his lunch and I'm taking it to him. He is a fisherman. Soldiers were looking around. Their eyes glanced behind her and scanned the bushes on the other side. Are you alone? One asked. Anna Marie nodded. Yes, she said. One of the dogs growled, but she noticed that the dogs, both dogs were looking at the lunch basket. One soldier stepped forward. The other and the two holding the dogs remained where they were. You came out before daybreak just to bring a lunch? Why doesn't your uncle eat fish? What would Kirsty reply? Anna Marie tried to giggle the way her sister might. Uncle Hendrik doesn't even like fish, she said laughing. He says he sees too much of it and smells too much of it. Anyway, he wouldn't eat a draw, she made a face. Well, I suppose if he were starving, but Uncle Hendrik always has bread and cheese for lunch. Keep chattering, she told herself, as Kirsty would, a silly little girl. I like fish, she went on. I like it the way my mother cooks it. Sometimes she rolls it in breadcrumbs and the soldier reached for it and grabbed the crisp loaf of bread from the basket. He examined it carefully, then he broke it in half, pulling the two halves apart with his fist. That would enrage Kirsty, she knew. Don't, she said angrily. That's Uncle Hendrik's bread. My mother baked it. The soldier ignored her. He tossed the two loaves of loaf to the ground, one half in front of each dog. They consumed it, each snapping at the bread and gulping it so it was gone in an instant. Have you seen anyone in the woods? The soldier barked the question at her. No, only you, Anna Marie stared at him. What are you doing in the woods anyway? You're making me late. Uncle Henry's boat will leave before I get there with his lunch. Or what's left of his lunch? The soldier picked up the wedge of cheese. He turned it over in his hands. He turned to the three men behind him and asked them something in their own language. One of them answered nine in a bored tone. Anna Marie recognized the word. The man had replied no. He had probably been asked, Anna Marie thought, do you want this? Or perhaps should I give this to the dogs? The soldier continued to hold the cheese. He tossed it back and forth between his hands. Anna Marie gave an exasperated sigh. Can I go now, please? She asked impatiently. The soldier reached for the apple. He noted its brown spots and made a face of disgust. No meat? He asked, glancing at the basket and napkin that lay in the bottom. Anna Marie gave him a withering look. You know we have no meat, she said insolently. Your army eats all of Denmark's meat. Please, please, she implored in her mind. 
please don't lift the napkin. The soldier laughed. He dropped the bruised apple on the ground. One of the dogs leaned forward, pulling at its leash, sniffed the apple and stepped and stepped back. <laughs> But both dogs still looked intently at the basket, their ears alert, their mouths open. Saliva glistened on their smooth pink gums. My dogs smell meat, the soldier said. They smell squirrels in the woods, Anna Marie responded. You should take them hunting. The soldier reached forward with a cheese in one hand as if he were going to return it to the basket. But he didn't. Instead, he pulled out the flowered cotton napkin. Anna Marie froze. Your uncle has a pretty little lunch, the soldier said scornfully, crumpling the napkin around the cheese in his hand. Like a woman, he added with contempt. Then his eyes locked on the basket. He handed the cheese and the napkin to the soldier beside him. What's that? There, in the bottom, he asked in a different, tense voice. What did Christy do? Anna Marie stomped her foot. Suddenly, to her own surprise, she began to cry. I don't know, she said, her voice choked. My mother's going to be angry that you stopped me and made me late. And you've completely ruined Uncle Hendrik's lunch. So now, he'll be mad at me too. The dogs whined and struggled against the leashes. Nosing forward to the basket, one of the other soldiers muttered something in German. The soldier took out the packet. Why was this so carefully hidden? He snapped. Anna Marie wiped her eyes on the sleeve of her sweater. It wasn't hidden any more than the napkin was. I don't know what it is. That, she realized, was true. She had no idea what was in the packet. The soldiers tore the paper open while below him on the ground the dogs strained and snarled, pulling against the leashes. Their muscles were visible beneath a sleek, short-haired flesh. He looked inside, then glared at Anna Marie. Stop crying, you idiot girl, he said harshly. Your stupid mother has sent your uncle a handkerchief. In Germany, the women have better things to do. They don't stay at home hemming handkerchiefs for their men. He gestured with a folded white cloth and gave a short, caustic laugh. At least she didn't stitch flowers on it. He flung it to the ground, still half wrapped in the paper, besides the apple. The dogs lunged, sniffed at it eagerly, then subsided, disappointed again. Go on, the soldier said. He dropped the cheese and the napkin back in the basket. Go on to your uncle and tell him how the Germans enjoyed his bread. All the soldiers pushed past her. One of them laughed and they spoke to each other in their own language. In a moment they had disappeared down the path in the direction from which Anna Marie had just come. Quickly she picked up the apple and the open packet with a white handkerchief inside. She put them into the basket and ran around the bend towards the harbour where the morning sky was now bright with early sun and some of the boat engines were starting their stride and din. The Ingeborg was still there, by the dock, and Uncle Hendrik was there, his light hair windblown and bright as he knelt by the nets. Anna Marie called him and he came to the side. His face worried when he recognised her on the dock. She handed the basket across. Mama sent her lunch, she said, her voice quivering. But soldiers stopped you and they took your bread. She didn't dare to tell him more. Henry glanced quickly into the basket. She could see the look of relief on his face and knew that it was because he saw the, that the packet was there, even though it was torn open. Thank you, he said, and the relief was evident in his voice. Anna Marie looked quickly around the familiar small boat. She could see down the passageway into the empty cabin. There was no sign of the Rosens or the others. Uncle Hendrik followed her eyes and her puzzled look. All is well, he said softly. Don't worry, everything is all right. I wasn't sure, he said, but now, he eyed the basket in his hands, 
Because of you, Anna Marie, everything is all right. You run home now and tell your mama not to worry. I will see you this evening. He grinned at her sadly. They took my bread, eh? He said. I hope they choke on it. Look for the answers to these questions in this reading. Number one, why do you think the German soldiers stopped Anna Marie? Number two, why do you think the contents of the packet were so important? Number three, why did Anna Marie be behave like Kirsty when she was stopped by the German soldiers? Number four, why was it good that Anna Marie did not know what was in the packet? And number five, what was in the basket that helped fool the Germans into thinking it was Uncle Hendrik's lunch?